Hey everyone, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below. If you enjoy my videos, give the video a thumbs up. Think of it as an offering to the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I view and or use crystals and show off my very small crystal collection. When it comes to crystals, I used to be very excited about getting new crystals. Um, they're shiny and sparkly and, and beautiful pieces of the earth, but as I have grown in my practice and as I have been more educated on the crystal industry and the ethics of crystal mining, um, I'm not so excited about getting new crystals anymore. If you're interested in the ethics of crystal mining and um, using crystals in general, I'm going to link some podcast episodes in the description from the Borealis Meditation Podcast. Kat Borealis is a geologist, but she's also an animist and a witch, and she has several podcast episodes that really dig into the different aspects of the crystal industry and mining and ethics and all of that, and really helps to give you information um, to set your own ethical guidelines when it comes to crystals. So. My views on crystals aren't necessarily going to be uh, your views. That's okay, we're different. I'm not here to tell you don't buy crystals. I have, I have crystals, obviously. Um, but anyway, I don't use crystals in the general sense that we may see online or in new age communities. Uh, if you watched my ego in your practice video, you will know I have iffy feelings when it comes to topics like crystal healing. That being said, I, I approach crystals from an animist perspective. Um, crystals are alive, they are beings in their own right. And that is sort of how I work with crystals. I don't use them necessarily as spell ingredients or ingredients at all. I work with them if they choose to say yes. I have been told no by a crystal before in the same way that I have been told by a plant, no, you can't take any of my leaves or no, I don't want you to take my petals. For me, it's the same thing with crystals. Each crystal has its own spirit and its own autonomy and it can choose whether or not it wants to help me or work with me. I want to say too that I don't believe in charging your crystals. <laughs> I, it's never really felt right to me to charge a crystal and I believe that comes from the way that I approach crystals in general. As an animist, I don't, I don't charge myself, you know, I don't charge um, a plant outside, I don't charge herbs that I'm using in spell work. I don't feel like I need to charge a crystal because the crystal already has a spirit. The crystal already is a being that already has a purpose. It, it already has things that it's good at. Now I can, you know, hold on to the selenite and ask it while I am sitting at my computer desk to keep the area clear of negative energy or to help me focus or things like that. But that's not me charging that crystal. That's That would be like me um, going to a friend that's really good at something and saying, hey, can you do this for me? You're really good at it. Uh, that's, that's sort of how I view charging crystals. I also don't typically cleanse my crystals unless I feel like they need to. So I know a lot of people, or I have seen a lot of people, um, put their crystals out on windowsills during the full moon. I have done this before myself in the past. Um, people will smoke cleanse their crystals. Like that's, that's great and it's wonderful if it works for you. It's just not something that I have ever felt the need to do because the crystals already come from the earth. Unless they have 
contained a lot of energy that needs to be released, then I, I don't generally cleanse my crystals either. Now, when it comes to my crystals, I can tell you exactly where each one came from or exactly who I got it from. Each one of my crystals or stones either has meaning to me or I grabbed it because it was pretty. Like, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, so I guess we can go through and talk about my crystals now. I don't really have an order of importance or use. I realized this morning when I sat down to record this video that one of my crystals is actually missing. I'm missing a small piece of fluorite that I was going to experiment with um, as part of like a crystal healing experiment, but I can't find it. It's around here somewhere. I'll find it eventually. Um, I guess we can start biggest to smallest, but I have a couple large chunks. Um, the first one that I have is my selenite tower. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I don't even know if this is real because I got it at Marshall's. I was walking around Marshall's one day um, by all of their candles and stuff and I saw this and I was like, Marshall's has a selenite tower? That's cool as hell. So I bought it and I think I paid like, I don't know, $8 for it, $10 for it. I don't even know. I don't even know if it's real, but it is cool looking and it sits on my uh, computer desk. And you'll notice as I go through this video, I don't really specify what these crystals are for. They have general properties and associations that the New Age community has given them, but I sort of just let them do their own thing. Um, so like with the selenite, people would say selenite is very cleansing and that selenite can even cleanse other crystals or charge other crystals. Um, I have seen people even have like a selenite plate and they put their electronics on it to, uh, I don't even know what they do it for. I don't even know why, but I guess it's supposed to be good and stop something from happening. The next crystal we can talk about is this big old chunk of amethyst that I have, purple amethyst. Um, I bought this amethyst and also this um, quartz cluster that I'm going to show you in a second at a fair type of thing when I lived in Oregon, um, sort of like a rock and gem show that they had downtown. And I bought this from a crystal seller. I can't remember where he said that it came from, but most quartz, if I'm not mistaken, quartz is like the most abundant mineral in the earth. And um, I bought this amethyst because I was really struggling at the time with my mental health. And, you know, people say amethyst can help you with your mental health and your depression and your anxiety. I don't think I ever used it in that specific way and um, it just sits it just sits on my shelf now. Um, to be honest, I don't have as close of a relationship with my crystals as I would like to and that is something that I am going to be working on in the future is growing that relationship with all of these crystals. Um, but yeah. Amethyst is really popular anyway, and it's pretty because it's purple, and I like purple. I got this quartz cluster at that same fair, and I just picked this one up because I'm like, you know what? That looks really cool. I, tumbled stones are great, but I really like raw crystals, raw minerals like this, whenever I go to purchase them because I, fi I find them beautiful. I find the raw, jagged edges of crystals in their formations more beautiful than a tumbled stone. And, you know, that's just my opinion, but that's why I picked this one. It's got several points in it that if they were to come apart, or if I could figure out how to take them apart, I would have several quartz points. Now, I have three stones here that I got from 
um, a place called Viper Lapidary. When I lived in Oregon, she is a crystal seller. She also makes um, crystal decorations. I'll leave a link to wherever you can find her um, in the description below. Um, but I have a very large rose quartz heart. I've had it for a couple of years now, and I used to meditate with this when I needed a boost to my self-esteem and really to my self-love. I haven't done it in a while, but I am going to be placing this particular crystal on my self-love altar. If you haven't seen my self-love altar, I'll link it in the description below. I'll also put it up here somewhere. Definitely recommend watching that one. It's something that's helped me out a lot. But from the same person, I also have a red jasper and a yellow calcite. I always get them confused between calcite and citrine, but then I remember that citrine is just heat treated amethyst or amethyst that has been like heated up. Uh, but anyway, I got these two. I picked them intuitively out of her jars that she had. I don't really know what they're for, but they're really pretty and they sit on my desk too. I told you I need to do a lot of work with my crystals. It used to be something that I was like, yes, crystals, you know, they can help a lot. But now I'm just like, cool, crystals, pretty shiny pieces of the earth. I didn't used to like the color orange, but it's growing on me. And I picked up this really pretty carnelian at Repticon here in the Florida area a couple of months ago. And I think it's really, really pretty. I, again, I have absolutely no idea what people say carnelian is for, but I really like how it looks with the oranges and the banding on the white. It is one of my favorites. Actually, I can't even say that it's one of my favorites. I choose these crystals because I like them. They are all my favorites. But then I also have this one that I believe they called Dragonstone. Again, I got this one at Repticon. I have no idea what exactly it is, but I'm pretty sure the woman that I got it from called it Dragonstone. I got it because it looks really freaking cool. And there was some story behind the red and the green and how um, the area that it was mined in, there's a lot of legends about dragons and that dragons died there and the red looks like the blood of a dragon. Um, this one is actually gonna go to my daughter because she wants it. But again, it's really pretty. Now these two, actually I have three that I have zero clue exactly what they are. This one, this beautiful gray one, came in an order that I got of some jewelry from a creator on Etsy. I'll leave that in the description below. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, it's the same artist that I bought my Nazar ring from. I also got this little gray stone, whatever it is. If someone knows what the next couple of things are, let me know in the comments because I really I have no idea. But I got this gray one from that artist and then I found this brown one, whatever it is, it might be some sort of agate, um, in my backyard. And I was like, oh, hey, that looks really cool. It's got this cool little line through it. Um, so I'm gonna take it and it's gonna go on my shelf. It's very smooth. It's not entirely smooth. It's got some ridges and bumps on it, but it is smoother than like a raw crystal, for example. Um, so that one, it just, it stays on my shelf. And again, if anyone knows what it is, please let me know. The last, actually, not the last. I forgot about this one. I also have this tumbled little quartz stone. This one sits on my altar and, with another stone and it's got a specific purpose. This one I work with. I also have this piece. I don't know what this is, but I went to another, um, rock and mineral show in Oregon. And uh, we walked by a booth and my daughter was looking at stuff. And the gentleman there just 
gave it to us. He said we could have it. And I, I have no idea what it is. It's, it's, a, it's an amalgamation of several different things. But it's got a hole in it and it's an interesting piece. So it's one that I like to keep around. I also have some little chips, crystal chips. I don't know what these are, but it came with an order I got from an artist last year, a year and a half ago. And um, I just keep them around in this little jar. I don't really do anything with them. I think I went through and I took all the amethyst pieces out of here that I could identify and I put them in a spell jar. Other than that, I know there's some quartz pieces in here, maybe some blue sodalite, maybe some lapis and some citrine, but I'm not entirely sure. But they don't come out of their jar, I just leave them there. The last two pieces, if you remember from the beginning when I talked about Cat Borealis, she actually went to the West Coast, she was doing something over there, and she rock counted um, her own mahogany obsidian. If you don't know what rock hounding is, it's basically just one person who goes out and they hunt for rocks. Um, minerals, crystals, gems, whatever it is, it's usually just a single person that goes and mines it themselves and not a large mine or an area where you go and you know they're gonna be there. Although that might count, I'm not sure. Anyway, having lived in the area that Kat went to and not having a piece of that place to remind me of where I lived, because sometimes I miss it there, um, I really wanted to buy one of these pieces from Kat, so I did and I got a gorgeous piece of mahogany obsidian from some of the lava flows in Oregon. And it is absolutely beautiful. And this one also sits on my desk and it's very grounding, very almost cooling in a sense. So this one I work with and I rub because it's not tumbled, it is, it is a raw piece, but part of it on the top here is smooth. So I will take this piece and I will hold it and rub it kind of like a worry stone. It's very grounding and can really cool off any excess or hectic energy that I'm feeling at the time. I really, really, really like this one and it fits in my hand perfectly like it was made for me. In, in the way that I use it. And then when I ordered this from her, she was nice enough to send me this little quartz point, this teeny tiny little quartz point. <laughs> and this one sits next to its little friend on my desk area. So besides the fact that I'm missing a fluorite and I don't know where it is to show you, those are all of my crystals. Uh, the only other crystal that's missing is the one that my fiance carries around in his pocket. I got him a smoky quartz to carry around in his pocket while he's at work. But those are my crystals. Those are my random thoughts on crystals because I didn't really put any notes together for this episode. Um, I just, I felt like I wanted to show you my crystals and really talk about how I view crystals in uh, my witchcraft practices because a lot of what we see online in regard to crystals is like uh, rose quartz corresponds with love and clear quartz can be substituted for anything or I don't even know the rest of the correspondences but we get a lot of correspondence lists and if that works for you that's great but that's not how I work with or view crystals and honestly my crystals could use a little TLC. <laughs> I don't give them as much attention as I should. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far and you watched all the way through, leave a diamond emoji in the comments below and let me know how you work with crystals. Do you have a favorite crystal? Comment below. And if you've made it this far and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button for me please and give the video a thumbs up as an offering to the YouTube algorithm. Stick around because I do plan on doing some experiments with different crystals and giving my thoughts and opinions on how they work. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say experiments, go back and watch my ego 
video is your ego getting in the way of your practice because I talk a little bit about what I'm going to do um, when it comes to experimenting. Also, don't forget that I have a Discord server. Uh, the link for my Discord server is in the description below. I always forget to say this at the end of every video, but I do have a community over there where we talk about all different kinds of stuff. We are an all-inclusive community. We are an LGBTQIA safe community. We just don't allow trash humans, hate, transphobia, etc. So if you're looking for witchy people, magical people to talk with and hang out with and ask questions and discuss things, Go ahead and look at the link in my description and I would be happy to have you in my Discord server. That's all for today and I will see you in my next video. Bye.